Hey guys, Adam Savage in my cave and this is so exciting because this is about a pilgrimage I made to the Jim Henson Creature Shop where I have never been before. I cannot believe that I have not yet crossed that item off on my bucket list, but now I have and I'm here to tell you it was everything I hoped it would be. It's hard to overestimate how important the Henson Creature Shop is in my brain. These are the folks that made Labyrinth and Dark Crystal, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Muppets. They have just finished production on season two of Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock, and they shipped in some of the costumes and pieces from that production to show me, it was so cool, just how they make the magic that they make. Okay, let's get into the video. Oh, we start with our needs. This is our neutral. We're going to start with our neutral. Or just right here. We're going to start this is good, with right? our neutral. They can never tell that we're they're popular. They're going to tell that we're popular. No, your lips are moving. We're going to see, right? I know, it's a murder. They always think that we're a ventriloquist, but we're not. No, 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 no. We don't do a ventriloquist. That's something else. It's a totally different art form. Okay, good. I would have thought you guys would be better at ventriloquism, honestly. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you, Wow, sir? wow, we thought you wow. knew better. <laughs> wow. So this when is- When will they learn? This is how you have to do your jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is, so the camera's meant sure to cut so it doesn't see your heads. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, and wait, then the monitor is backwards to you, it's not mirrored. That is it correct. It is backwards. It's exactly what you would see if you were facing this way, shooting this way. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, this is the most, uh, uh, this is basically what Jim created. This is what exactly what Jim created. He basically decided to use the television frame as a proscenium. And so instead of like, you know, puppet shows of, of those days where you'd see like, you know, a, a Kukla friend and Ollie where the puppeteer would be hidden behind a stage. Right, right. You know, he said, well, let's just use the television as our stage. And so what we learned to play to is basically using the screen as as our as our friend, mm -hmm. as our And cutoff. when you were joking about the neutral position, you really are trying to figure out always what your neutral position yes. is from each camera angle. Yeah, so a puppet's position, first of all, the bottom of the frame is usually the, the top top of a head. So the bottom of the frame is just above Donna's head there. Thank mm. you, thank you. It's You're welcome. Great. I just want to know you were left. Thank you. <laughs> and then the, the neutral position of the body is, you know, straight as you can, because the yeah. arm has a natural bend, and we try to, you know, not show that, not yeah. show that there's an arm. In no there, arms. Because that's weird. Yeah. But then an, a little curve of the puppet arms that Morgana is here assisting me with, with a little little bit of, you know, neutral a curve. See that? can come away, See that? making a point, and then yeah. go back in. Makes me look more dapper, too. Yeah. But I'm always kind of returning to neutral. Mm -hmm. I'm always curious about the, the, the uh, just the day-to-day -day grind of doing this. And I'm mm -hmm. curious, there must be days when you, like, just can't get your eyeline right. Yeah, there's, time, mm -hmm. there's times where you, you yeah, it's yeah. frustrating because you'll be doing a shot and be like, oh, it looks so good. Oh! <laughs> and it's remarkable how much, you know, if you look at the, the monitor, you can see like, you know, Gobo looks like he's looking right at you there. Yep. You know, he looks like he's he's selling everything right down the camera to you. Yeah. But it's, it's funny, if I were to do the same thing and kind of talk here. It's all of a sudden, it's a totally mm -hmm. different that connection. Wow. Yep. So, you know, it's really. The stakes are high. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why puppeteers trip over things all the time. That's why we can't have cords and stuff around because we're never looking at the floor. We don't right, look where right. we're going. We may glance at it. We tape our sides. This is very low tech. We tape <laughs> the sides, which are the parts of the script, yeah. to the side of the monitor. And everyone has their own pages highlighted the way they want. So it's covered in yeah. paper. So does seniority give you the choice of the position of where your sides are on the monitor? <laughs> well, it's usually who, <laughs> who has the lead in the scene. Yeah. Like okay. If it's Red's scene, Karen just yeah. will put her and the rest of us will fall. It's and just we'll, And we'll stick them all over yeah, the, like, the set of Frog Rock is actually a lot of it's made out of styrofoam or soft foam. Yeah. So it's great because if you can't find a position on the monitor, you can like take like a pin and like pin it into the rock oh, or something. Right. Like <laughs> a, a skewer we, and a popsicle yeah, stick. Exactly. Yeah. We, we tape them to our arms. We tape them to our, <laughs> yeah. our thighs if we're sitting. If you're doing Just like a walking works, scene, man. like sometimes you have to, uh, the sets are big. So sometimes you have to start over here and end the scene over there. And so you'll see like little pieces of lines taped up. Yeah. Along the way because, because you, know. you hop from monitor to monitor as you go. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very, this is simple. This is a Wait breeze a right minute. here. So this is a great way to train puppeteers. It's yeah. a single camera. Yeah. yeah. But when you're on set, you're dealing with other bodies, many monitors, two cameras. Yeah. 
So that sounds terrifying. A, a walking shot sounds like the worst nightmare. Yeah, when we you enter a, and do a musical number, and you're you're literally you can use eight monitors at a time in one yeah. shot. We did a musical number uh, a little while ago that actually was the Fraggles going going around in a big circle, and then they had to switch directions. And my puppet was on top. Gobo was on top of this uh, uh, doozer vehicle, and so you know when you look at when you looked at it from the outside, it's like oh my god, it's a whole circle. It's like twenty monitors in a circle plus a monitor hidden behind where I was. Right. Like it, it was crazy. And and, we and, need all of them. Yeah. And, Amazing. I yeah. mean, I, I imagine the first time you had to do that, it was it felt like tapping your head and while well, unicycling. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. And, and, and again, it's in getting the crew used to like we need these monitors and we need all of them. And yeah. they get it yeah. pretty much right away. Yeah. That uh, that yeah, it, it's essential. It's there. They are our eyes. The monitors are our eyes. And and really, like you just saw, like you know, it's the difference between something looking really nice and oh, sorry, really technical, and being able to like figure out okay, where's the center of frame? How do we split this shot evenly? Mm -hmm. How do we make Gobo Moki look like they're looking right at the audience? Mm -hmm. You know, when I look over at Moki. This looks really good on camera. Maybe in real life it wouldn't look as good, but it looks yeah. good on camera. So it's just, it's funny. The, the camera kind of, you really are, you have to be so attuned to what it's seeing, first mm. and foremost. That's the one mm, thing I it. actually Thank know you. from being a person on camera is that I don't have to look all the way at the thing. I can look right. at the 45 and people will fill it <laughs> Puppets in. Puppets are the same. Because if you know, if you, if you, <laughs> yep. if, and they're, 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 you know, they're basically ping pong ball eyes. So yeah. if I look all the way like that, you lose his pupils and you start to lose the character. But if I'm just a little bit like that, mm -hmm. yeah. We try to make it so you see two pupils, even though they're oh. profile, they're mm -hmm. not necessarily, if you look at them, they're, they don't look like they're looking at each other in real time. But on camera, they do. And seeing two as opposed to this, this is much more interesting. And tilting the top of the head towards frame, this is yeah. just very, very basic stuff. Looks looks better than if than I this. were if, than this. And even depth this too, we can better. we can mess with. So like if you know sometimes in certain scenes, Gobo will actually be here mm -hmm. just for space because we need to f fit five puppets in, and he'll be talking to Moki. <laughs> I mean now you're <laughs> king. <laughs> Look how small you I'm are. I'm so small right now. <laughs> Look at little Moki. Isn't that something? <laughs> Look at little Moki. But um, you know, oftentimes we'll be actually in two different planes of depth, mm -hmm. and it'll look like we're right next to each other. Like right now, if I'm in front like that, right, you know, it still kind of looks like if you didn't know that Gobo is a little bit too big right now, you would think that he was looking right at her. Makes it hard on the focus, guys. Yeah, they but, love it. <laughs> love it. Do, do puppets have a preferred camera side sometimes? Um, yes, <laughs> and it has to do with anatomy. Look, at, so right now Johnny has the harder job because mm -hmm. Johnny's hand is twisting the way the hand doesn't want to twist. Where mine, because I'm right-handed, to turn this way is easy. I can go mm -hmm. all the way behind. Turning this way is hard because I'm going against myself. Yeah, oh, so your body has but to I rotate But I do have the width, perverted so. human position because my my I can lean myself out of camera and not the stream as much to get in. Mm -hmm. But Donna's in the middle of the shot. And I'm getting, so she, as you know, oh, so I'm getting my head bonked yeah, getting by. Hit my rod. You know what, it happens. I'm used to it. Does yeah. anybody Is anybody a switch hitter and can puppeteer left or right? Some people can. Some I'm that's shocking to people. me. No, I can't I I imagine must feel like. In fact, we oftentimes have to do two puppets, you know, like where you'll, you'll see like a big chorus of Fraggle singing a musical number. And it's so funny because it's like, you know, even the most skilled technicians with their dominant hand, you put on a puppet on your left hand and, you know, you'll notice that your, your puppet's suddenly singing like up into the back. <laughs> You're like, oh God. So it's funny how much we depend. It, it We're so true to our dominant hand. I can't puppeteer with my left hand for anything. I did one shot and I was so proud where Moki's oh, yeah, holding right. on to something and dangling and I didn't have any lines and I just sort of physically memorized that. this is where, and I was like, guys, I did a left-handed shot for the first time <laughs> in a 29 year career. It's like you're starting out over again. Yeah. Like, oh, oh wait, oh, how does that go? Cause you're so used to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like there's there, there's real memory that's in your hand. Yes. Yep. It, there's a, it is a muscle memory and it's, I think it's like being a dancer, you know, you, mm -hmm. your muscles get trained in a certain way that you remember how to do certain things without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a, a great dancer doesn't have to think about a time step after a while. Right. And that's kind right, of the same right. thing with puppetry. It's like, you just, you know, even right now, how we're nodding like that, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, we've been so trained to keep the puppets alive that we don't have to think about it. Yeah. yeah. And well, keeping so the puppets alive is really part of keeping yourself in character so that when the camera's rolling, you are right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, it, and it helps you forget that you're in pain. <laughs> Because this for a because long time is hard. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it when feels I, like play. Last time I moved into, one time I moved into an apartment and I invited four other woman puppeteers to paint the ceiling. <laughs> it was the best decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that is the go, worst hey! job. Of, but they're all just like this, right? <laughs> 
So boom operators get it, yeah, yeah. ceiling painters Waiters. get it, puppeteers, puppeteers get it. Get it. <laughs> and you do you do start to feel like it's funny. I've gone for massages where they you can tell they're like, so what do you do <laughs> when they're feeling all the yes. knots and the Be- muscles? Because more muscles side, on one side yeah. than the yeah, they're like this side is uh, not okay. And I'm like, oh, that's my puppeteering side. And then you can see they're like, okay, you know, my, this side will be great, but this side will be just completely messed wow. up. So, I had yeah. a chiropractor say your rib cage is a quarter inch higher on your right side than your left. Let's fix it. Kick it, kick it. Oh gosh. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Best chiropractic adjustment yeah. ever. It's all worth it though. Yeah. You know, you get to make people smile and mm-hmm. have a pretty awesome job. Yeah. I had, it's the best job ever. Do dances I felt like, like I understood, but I didn't know until now just how much performance is in the nose. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, the nose. Mm-hmm. See, it gives you all. Ooh. Well, it's so much more than a nose. It's like most of the face mm. yeah. in camera. Yeah, our fraggle snouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fraggle snouts. Of course, every puppet's different. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. We're each like a snowflake, unique in our own way. Oh, it got really deep beautiful. there. Wow. wow. Yeah. Someone okay. write that down. Someone write that down now. Rhonda? Rhonda? Yeah, Rhonda, write that down. Yeah, it's, 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 and you know, there's a lot of, when you're trying to fit like 10 puppets into a shot like this, what we, we call it prom style, what we do. So if you notice, like, you know, if it's just one puppet, you can kind of stand to your side like this, but yeah. we actually stand like this, which we like call it. Like all in a line. Mm-hmm. Oh, our wow. human bodies are against each other like this. And we're kind of puppeteering over ourselves because it gets more puppets in the shot and it gets us closer. Mm -hmm. So we jokingly call that prom style. So if you have a really tall puppeteer or a really short puppeteer, Mm -hmm. you have to bring out some boxes for them or everybody else. Or shoes. Or shoes. I have a pair of custom made shoes that, that make me six feet tall. That are flared at the bottom, and right. then I have oh, some that are like make me three inches taller than I am. I call them the, the, the baby spice shoes because you remember like baby spice back in the Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was calling that. Yeah. Super platforms, and then we have other puppeteers like the very talented Frank Meshkalite, who is six three. Who so he I, spends he, the whole time like he this. He origamis right. himself. He if he's by himself, he'll do an action stance. Yeah. That's, but if he's smushed in amongst us, he has to literally origami himself into. We did a shot some. recently where, where Frank was with. Uh, he plays Boober, and he was with. Karen, who does red, and Donna does Moki. And Karen and Donna are both shorter, and Frank is so tall. So literally, it was so funny. He spent three minutes, I was watching, I was like videotaping it. You know, you guys are like standing pretty comfortably, and Frank's like, he's like this. And he's, and he's having to walk it, so he's like crab walking in the scene. But it's just like, and he said he doesn't even think about it, that it's just, and it's true, you don't. You really find yourself in positions where you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing right now? So speak, I just want a practical question. Speaking of pain, like, how much of the day on a regular shoot day of Fraggle Rock are you guys literally like this? Oh, is it yeah. five mm-hmm. hours? Hours. 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 Yeah. yeah. Wow. Especially if you're, you know, when, when we're standing free like this, it's great because we can come down and rest. Yeah. When you're like sitting on a rock or you're hanging out of the side of a wall, which happens a lot in Fraggle Rock because you see puppets on, on walls, you see right. Fraggle Rock. Oh, so you can't just stuck. remove it. So yeah. sometimes you have to really just go into a place of, you know, it's almost zen-like in a way. You just mm-hmm. kind of get, you kind of, you get used to it. Yeah. But I'd also imagine sometimes it's rough and you turn to your fellow puppeteer and they know your experience and that's enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of commiserating going sure. on. But because sometimes, yeah, being in a rock and there's a place for your arm, a hole for your arm, but there's no place for your head. And the puppet has to be a certain height. Right, so right. literally oh. been like this and just, shoved up as, as as high as I can possibly, but my head is way done. Hey guys, are we rolling? And then you gotta make our puppet look really good and really fluid. <laughs> yeah, and then as soon as they cock cut, oh, you hear this, oh, I get to do Sprocket the dog, so who's a massive puppet, and oftentimes he's sitting on the ground or like, you know, through a hole in the floor. Yeah. And Karen Prell, who worked in the original Fraggle Rock, mm-hmm. um, often assisted me. And one day, she, I didn't even know I was doing it, but you know, I was had my hand through and I had to get him higher because he had to look good. So I was literally upside down like oh. like this and I was kneeling and, and she said that she could see from behind that my shoulder was doing that. I didn't feel it. Wow. But it's just the kind of thing that we do, you know, and, and we all do that. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's just what looks good on camera. You get so dedicated to that and you want to make it look good. So yeah. we find ourselves in weird positions all the time. <laughs> and like most things, you don't remember the pain later. My my uh, massage <laughs> therapist no. met, notices yeah. it. <laughs> no. What's wrong with you? I but, just I yeah. don't think people realize just how hard it is on your body. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. We to have to. Good. We do have to take a lot of care of ourselves when we're not working, and mm. a lot of stretching when we when we are. Right. A lot of strength training. So I want to ask about the mirror versus non-mirror image. Yes. Um, is it? 
Is there a specific technical reason it's not mirrored or is that because it's the way it's always been and that's how the majority of puppeteers know? I understand that, that it's because it's exactly what the camera is seeing. So there's no know, translation you have to do between what the audience is seeing exactly. and what that. Okay. It was like, and, and you know, a lot of the early Muppet things that Jim did were live. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, he really wanted to see, I think, what was happening for real, what the audience at home was getting right, live right. in that moment. And also there, there may or may not have been the technical capability to flip the image on. on right, right. Back monitors. then, no. Yeah. Right. And so there's a lot of debate as to why. But it just kind of is the way it is. And in other countries, I think in the UK, they do flip oh. monitors. So Monsters. when an American show goes over, it's <laughs> it yeah, it's harder to, you know, someone's got to give. And so it's it's, it's like you're starting over again. It's such a yeah. weird thing. It's like because we are so it's so second nature now to, to play to the flipped uh, or the normal image. Yeah. That when someone mirrors it, it really is like you've never puppeteered before. It's so funny. Well, I'd imagine if you're puppeteering in the UK and someone says, look to your left, you're like, I don't even know what that means anymore. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's two different <laughs> styles, right? It's yeah. two different styles. But uh, it's always nice when we can all agree on <laughs> what we right. want to be. And if we all get there in the end, don't we, Gobo? Yeah, sure do. We all get there in the end. In the end. Mm. Look at that. Look at, hey, we, you know what? We linked arms. Oh, we did. Hey. Look at oh. that. We're that such good friends. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Little tricks. Yeah. What I love about them so much is that it's clear that you guys also really love and understand these characters. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Evan. We well, do. We, we both got to inherit them, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's, it's such an honor to, to take these characters on because you know, Kathy and Jerry who originated them are heroes yeah. to us in the puppet mm -hmm. world. And, and you know, it's just, you know that you're, you're continuing on a legacy. It's, not, it's more than a character, it's a legacy. So. Um, how many of these puppets will be built for an average season? How of dare these you? two guys. Excuse me. What are you talking about? We are one I of forgot a kind. That. Never mind. I didn't ask. <laughs> um, I believe two, and then a stunt or swim one. Yes. <gasps> stunt or swim. There's one. actually there's there's uh, th this year there's four. There's there's oh. the two main that we can uh, go between, and then there's a stunt version like Donna's saying, like an armature one that we can either throw or put in weird positions. And there's a swim version that's built differently so that it can be in the water and not the absorb pond. a ton of water. And yeah, and it, usually they don't use glue on those puppets because the glue. When you throw the puppets in the dryer to dry, the glue would dissolve. Oh. So they're all sewn. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And it's really funny. And it's like, you know, talk about a weird situation for Fraggle Rock. They're in the pond a lot. And so right. there's a puppeteer under this actual pond with their arm through a rubber sleeve going all oh the way into God. the, into the uh, pond. And then the puppet has to be put on top. So it's, yeah. I'm sure the, the seal for their arm is perfect and there's no leakage. There actually isn't. Really? I mean, has... Season one there was. Oh, was like, oh yeah. And we were like, so these, there's a lot of monitors and cords. It's all okay, right? Of course it is. Sure. It was, it was, it was. But uh, again, it's your heads against this fiberglass thing. But um, but yeah, it's a trip because you feel the puppet sucking in the water and it's like, you can't, you almost can't come out because then you can't get back in. Wow. Because of the it, like, you know, It's like they anything, so it sticks the, to your arm. Yeah. Oh. Wow. They have to squish out the, the, the foam. Yeah, we did a scene out. last year where Red was in the pond and Karen, who performs Red, was, you know, we were like, okay, and then she jumps in the water and she resurfaces and shakes it off. And after a while, you're thinking, oh yeah, like this is absorbing so much water. And so it was like lifting like 50 pounds oh. over your head. It, you know, you don't think about that, but it's true. They're like giant sponges. Well, that brings up a question um, for each of you. What is the hardest thing you've been asked to do with these characters? With these characters? Mm. Gosh. If these haven't presented huge specific challenges, I'd love to hear about hard challenges with other puppeteering. Wow. I think for me it was being in the pond. I stupidly volunteered because <laughs> I love I love the puppets in the water. I just love like it just it makes you go, how are they doing that? Yeah. So the pond we have this year is actually about eight feet deep. It's like it's like a basically like a whirlpool. Yeah. And I was like, hey, what if I got in a wetsuit? And I got in the actual pond with the puppet. With like a did, straw? And we did, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and we, did, and we did this like really cool thing where like, you know, Gobo jumps in. Does, and I was like pitching all the stuff. And then of course everyone's like, okay. And then the day came and I was like, I'm in a wetsuit in the water with a puppet. What's happening right now? And it was it was really hard. Once yeah. he absorbed water, it was just like, and the water was cold. It was it was crazy. But that, that was <laughs> but one of those days where I was like, my seven-year-old self would have loved this. This is what you wanted to do. Yeah. So live the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, water is always tough. Um, when they're flying and dangling, that's that's always kind of fun. I think holding a, a full body puppet or anything heavy out at this angle yeah. is can be really hard. Hard on your body, hard on your tendons. Um, oh, that's true. We should say, because sometimes what we'll do is to do the whole puppet, to see the whole puppet in the shot, we'll put on blue suits and we'll open oh, up the back of the head okay. and we'll do 
just the head and maybe the body, and then another puppeteer will do the hands, another puppeteer will do the feet. Got it. And so you're, then you're putting, all, like Donna saying, you're putting all the way out in front of you. But it looks amazing because that's how you see, yeah. you know, a, yeah. a puppet dancing full body. Yeah. But um, I'm curious how each of you got into puppeteering. What was your first foray into the professional field? Into the professional field, uh, I was doing a, um, I was doing theater, musical theater, uh, with a friend, and we talked. My friend Paul Lewis, and we talked about our uh, mutual love of puppets. And he said, "Hey, if I built some puppets and we did shows at like schools and malls, I could pay you sixty bucks a show. Would you do that with me?" I'm like, sure. I love puppets. So that was my first. And then he sold one to a local producer, and that was my first series. And that Amazing. was 1994. Wow. Well, that was mine. I. It was actually Fraggle Rock. I was seven years old and I had never seen Fraggle Rock before. My parents and I were staying at a, a motel that had HBO, that was a big deal, but yeah. turned on the television and there was Fraggle Rock. And I remember having this gut reaction to it, like where I didn't want to stop watching it and I wanted to know immediately how they did it. And it just changed my life. It was like the day I realized that there are people who do this and yeah. do the voices. And, you know, I grew up doing theater as a kid. I loved theater and it combined everything I love about it. It's voices, it's singing, it's character, it's movement. Yeah. You know, it, so yeah. So the original series is what inspired me. So it's still very surreal. They know this. I make, I cry all the time That's because, I'll, you know, you're <laughs> yeah. like, what am I doing here? What's Fantasy happening? Camp. This is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for showing me some of the ropes and also some of the rods. Oh, oh, I see what he did. Uh, you were working on that one for a while. That was no, it just came up. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well done, you. Thank yeah. you. Well done. Thank you. I think you're an honorary <laughs> fraggle for sure. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks, you're awesome. Mr. Adam. You're awesomer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're awesomer. I don't, come no, into I don't have sympathetic movement. Oh, uh, well. Oh, uh, well. I don't know. Oh, actually, I might. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your Belubiuses, because I know exactly where we should go. Tell us in song.